prime time local news serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Hello and welcome to prime time local news. I'm Callan Dunlop. Thanks for joining us. This week, Lloyd Minster hosted the grand unveiling of their new mechanical wastewater treatment facility. I had the chance to find out more about the journey up to this point. Born out of necessity, Lloyd Minster started work on a new wastewater treatment facility in 2019. The new facility is able to treat up to 42,000 cubic meters of wastewater per day. The original facility was born was built in 1980 and serving a community of only about 13,000 people. And I mean, we've ex grown and expanded. Yes, there's been some additions and renovations to it, but the lagoons were um, starting to fail. And so there needed to be a new project put in place. City Council has been working tirelessly in order to ensure this facility would be born. The treatment facility was built to meet the needs of the community for the next 20 years. Uh, we, we dealt with some challenges from funding to COVID to supply challenges. I'm working with a, a, t a group of people and teams, uh, local contractors, subcontractors, and people that played such a huge role in this. And to see it come to fulfillment on time, under budget, uh, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. This is a project that will continue to serve our community for a very long time. The final costs of the project sit at $81.5 million and received funding from all levels of government to this point. The government of Saskatchewan was the first to come to the table with its $12.1 million, and I know there was some additional lobbying that went on uh, for some time afterwards to get Alberta to the table, and it was through the Canada Infrastructure Program that we were able to get all the partners at the table and make sure that this happened. Callan Dunlop, Primetime, Local News. A showcase and celebration of Filipino culture hits Lloydminster this weekend. Our Leanne Sanders spoke to the organizer of the third annual Filipino Festival about the event. I'm here with Dawson Antonio and we are talking about the third Filipino Festival in Lloydminster. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much Leanne for inviting us as well. It sounds like a very, very exciting event uh, in our community, uh, adding another dimension uh, to our community. What can you tell me about this festival? Yeah, so uh, this is our third Filipino festival already. Uh, we have um, um, planned about this way back after the COVID pandemic, and I thought we thought that this is the best time to reconnect among the Filipino Canadians here in Lloyd and surrounding areas. And this is also our one way of showcasing the Filipino culture, customs, traditions through songs, dances, and food. And also this is our one way of saying thank you, Canada and Lloyd Minster, for all the great things you have done to uh, the Filipino community. That's why we uh, this, this Filipino festival is open to everyone. What will this year's uh, festival feature? Yeah, so um, we will have our program will start at 9.30 with a caravan. Um, then after that, we will have a foot parade wherein it will be participated by 20, uh, 22 different groups and associations representing different provinces in the Philippines, churches, uh, sports club, uh, fraternities, and employees and friends uh, group as well. Aside from those 22 groups that will be participating, there are also members of our organizing committee. So it's, it's, it's easy for all of us to, uh, to plan the activities. We have so many people helping us out. And then we will have 44 food and other vendors. We will also have a community information fair during that day, wherein we have invited a number of uh, government organizations and non-government organizations like City of Lloyd Minster, Catholic Social Services, HHA, HS, and others to provide information about any available services for the people of Lloyd in our area. And of course, we have also our sponsors booth. So we are expecting around 80 to 90 booth or tents to be set up along the amphitheater area. So this is a little bit of a huge, not a little bit, but I think this is a huge one for not only for, for us Filipino Canadians, but also for the whole uh, people here in Lloyd Minster and area. Dawson, for people who may not be familiar with the Filipino culture, uh, how would you sum it up? Yeah, I think uh, if you have 
if people you have known people from from the Philippines, we are so outgoing, we are so friendly, we always wanted to have fun. But at the same time, we are also hardworking people. We are always trying our best to perform well at work with our family or even in with volunteer services. So this encompasses the the culture of and the uh, personality of the Filipinos all over the world. All right, so let's get down to the details. When does it start and where is it happening? So uh, the, as what I have mentioned, it will be on June 22nd. It will start with a caravan at the Cerebral Sports Center going to uh, Bad Miller Park through Highway 17, Highway 16, College Drive, and back to Bad Miller Park. At 10.30, we will have our uh, foot parade. We're in, we have all our invited guests from Mayor Albers, MLA Colin Yang, MLA Gart Roswell, the two MPs send the regrets because I think they're busy in Ottawa, but they have sent their, their uh, representatives. And we're also waiting for confirmation from our Consul General from the Philippines in Calgary, based in Calgary to attend. After that, we will have our opening program, uh, a short description of, of, of our Filipino Festival, introduction of all the participating groups, our speakers, our government organizations. And after that, we will have cultural presentations wherein we have 14 uh, sorry, eight uh, groups who will be uh, having cultural representations. We will have a lunch, which is open to everyone. Uh, of course, we have our vendors all over the place. We will have, uh, we'll have Pinoy games, Palarong, uh, Pinoy Palaro. Uh, in the afternoon, we have community Zumba. We will have talent presentation until 9.30 in the evening. So there's so much uh, uh, to be uh, offered by the uh, Filipino Festival Committee. We have also bouncy castles. We will have Kalesa and Kalesa and horse ride being provided by one of our sponsors and of course our food vendors. So it's 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 one way of showcasing all our culture through dances, songs, and food. Okay, it sounds like an absolutely fabulous event. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today, and thanks uh, for giving me the, all the information. And good luck with it. Thank you so much, Leanne. Have a good day. Bye bye. Our Abbey St. John is back at Border Pods Animal Shelter for our weekly edition of Pet Project. I'm back at Border Paws Animal Shelter for our weekly edition of Pet Project on a different day this week, um, but no less cute than on Tuesdays. Uh, today we have an adorable cat. We are in the cu cuddle room, um, and today we have Skedaddle. She's a little bit shy, so she's in the corner a little bit, but she has an adorable, affectionate personality. So she's not at all aggressive. She's no. just, just a tad, you need to be a little bit slow when you're going towards her. So tell me a little bit about how she came here and her perfect fit. So Skedaddle is actually found by a member of the public and brought in by bylaw. Mm -hmm. We have had her here since December 21st of last year. So it's been a little while. Yeah. And like her name, she does skedaddle. <laughs> if you know there's too many uh, fast movements or it's too loud, she is a nervous cat, but she's a very affectionate mm -hmm. cat. Like you saw early, yeah. as long as you slow, easy movements, mm -hmm. she was all about the cuddles yeah. and the chin scritches, and she was just living for it. Yeah. So I feel like she would do amazing in a home with maybe um, a mature person or couple mm -hmm. um, or older kids that you know can respect her boundaries yeah. and let her come to you when she's ready. But before, we couldn't get her to come out of the little houses when people were in here, and she's doing a loads better than when yes. she first got here yes definitely I you know slowly put my hand out in front of her like most people know to do with new animals and she sniffed and immediately she rubbed her head on my hand and so she's very affectionate she just is. you know you need to come to her kind of on her terms a little bit yeah. and be a little bit slow but she is very easy to warm up uh, warm up to you so that's awesome um, now you had a couple of uh, events over the weekend over Father's Day weekend mm -hmm. first we're going to talk about the comedy show because that happened on Friday you don't have a total necessarily but no. how was the evening so the evening went amazing lots of funny jokes we had uh, pretty good turnout for that and we just want to thank everybody who took the time to come and check it out and hopefully you had an amazing time because the people who went that we heard about it was it was pretty good 
that's yeah. awesome. Really funny and for a great cause. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And if we do get a total, we can uh, talk about it later on. For sure. Um, now, something you do have a total on that happened the next day is, mm -hmm. of course, the show and annual Show and Shine car show. Very popular in this city. How did that go? I understand you guys had a bench that we was donated did. for you guys to auction off. So the folks at Just Cruising had actually made and donated um, a custom bench for us to raffle off during the car show. And we pulled in a total of $3,350 toward the shelter with that bench. And we just want to thank everybody who came out, had a great time to check out the cars. They had a kid's zone. There was music. It was just an amazing time. And we're so thankful for everybody that came down and supported us and, of course, the Just Cruising crew. It was amazing. That's awesome to hear and a great fundraiser as well. And yeah. people are coming out to enjoy the car show. And so added added in animals, that's <laughs> even better. Yeah. Um, now, less of a fundraiser, more of a mental health kind of program. You guys were at the Comprehensive High School on Tuesday. Yeah. Tell me a little bit how that went and how the kids uh, reacted to the animals being there to help kind of alleviate some stress. Well, they loved it. So what we like to do around exam time is bring some of our animals to the schools, kind of help kids decompress, de-stress between exams. And the uh, it's always overwhelmingly positive when kids walk by and like, oh, there's a dog here, yeah. there's a cat here. And you can just instantly see the stress just kind of mm -hmm. melt away. And then they go into their next class kind of just feeling better, less mm -hmm. stress, less anxiety. And it's actually been proven in studies that mm. animal therapy does help with stress and yes. actually helps people live longer. Yes, I yeah. definitely will be on that. I definitely agree <laughs> with that 100%. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's always nice because it's something that kind of, you know, they see the animal there that they didn't know was going to be there and then they kind of forget yeah. about the stress that they're, they were dealing with moments before. So that's mm -hmm. awesome that you guys were able to go. I know you guys went to Lakeland College as well for their exam. Yes. So it's great that you guys were able to incorporate the high schools as well. Now, same question as every week. Is there any donations that you're in need of? Well, we have been getting um, a few spicy cats in, so <laughs> what would be greatly appreciated is that the shields that we can use because we, I mean... A few scratches. A few scratches, <laughs> right? And cat scratch fever is a thing if mm -hmm. an animal comes in that's sick and, you know, we get yeah. tagged. So something like a shield just to kind of protect us so that we can treat them if they need it because they come in scared and they don't necessarily know that we're trying to help them. So um, the cat shields would be good. And uh, also um, the non-clumping cat litter, because mm -hmm. we have some mamas with babies and that's the only kind that they'll use. We find the clumping stuff sticks to the kittens. So we prefer to use the non-clumping with our mamas. That's awesome. And something that I forgot to bring up as well that's important is that you guys have a pet smart and pet value uh, adoption events. So let's yes. talk, let's kind of go backwards a little bit <laughs> and talk about those two adoption events so people know. So on the 29th at uh, Pet Value in Vermilion, we are going to have an adoption event. So we're looking forward to bringing um, community out to see the animals that are down there and hopefully find them their forever homes. And we have um, also a week-long adoption event coming up with PetSmart from the 15th to the 21st of July. We'll have different animals there every day during that week and we're hoping that you'll come out and see them and maybe find a new forever buddy. Yes, I love those events and it's always nice to incorporate with the uh, pet stores in yeah. the city and even in Vermilion as well. That just helps you guys a ton as well. And I, you guys have had a lot of success with those events in yeah. the past. So i definitely not worried about those and it's great that you guys are having those again. So uh, thank you for joining me and skedaddle. I mean, she, she stayed in her corner, but she, I think, would make the perfect companion in a stress-free environment. She is just so loving and affectionate. I mean, she stayed out the entire time we were in here. Yep. And when she first got here, that wouldn't have happened. So it's progress, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And she's great with other cats as she well. Is. So uh, yeah. I think she'd be perfect for any home. So thank you. Thank you so much. That's all we have for news. Sports is up next. But first, here's a look at your closing market.
Today's oil prices are brought to you by First General Services. looking for a great way to spend some time with the family, consider heading down to Wainwright for the annual Wainwright Stampede. Our Thomas Wildman has more. Today I'm joined by Murray Bretzer, the president of the Wainwright Stampede, and he's here today to talk about the Wainwright Stampede, which will be taking place this weekend. And so thank you so much for being with me today, Murray. Well, thank you very much for having us. We're uh, getting pretty excited. You know, up Slack started this morning, so it's nice to get things underway. And to start, Murray, for those who have never heard of it before, what exactly is the Wainwright Stampede? Well, we have all the major events in the you know, Canadian Professional Rodeo Association. We've got truck wagon racing from the CPCA. You know, we've got a midway on the ground. We've got a downtown parade from our Chamber of Commerce. You know, every business you know, has breakfast, dinners, and stuff all week long. So it, it's a whole week of activities here in Wainwright. And so you mentioned the rodeo, Murray, but are there any other major events that are going to be taking place as well during the Wainwright Stampede, as well as some of the new events that haven't been present at previous Wainwright Stampedes? Friday night after the uh, rodeo, there's a dance in the hall here right on the grounds. And then Saturday night after the, under the lights rodeo, there is a cabaret down at the Peace Memorial Multiplex in town. So that's always an exciting time, you know, and get everybody out and doing that. Um, there's lots of activities on the grounds here to do. Um, not a whole lot new this year uh, as far as activities. Uh, uh, we didn't add a whole bunch new, but you know, uh, well, once again, we got our giving away our Dodge truck raffle. Uh, $100 gets you a chance on our Dodge truck. And, uh, you know, it just, it's a full weekend of events if you want to come down and take it all in. And if people are interested in attending, where can they go to get tickets as well as where they can find out more information? You can buy tickets on the ground or you can buy tickets online at winnightstampede.ca and uh, there's everything's on there there's ticket booth on the grounds and uh, any member has tickets from the truck and weekend passes as well you get quite a savings if you buy a weekend pass so it's a good way to look at it thank you so much for your time today murray and we definitely hope that you guys have another fantastic wainwright stampede now let's take a look at your agriculture prices <music> Let's take a quick look at your three-day forecast for Lloydminster. Overall, we're looking at some very nice weather. High of 22 with a 40% chance of rain on Friday. Saturday, high of 24 and some sunshine. Sunday, we're going to see a high of 27 with a 42% chance of precipitation. That is all the time we have today for Primetime Local News. Thanks so much for watching and have a great night.